my name is Yewen. Recently I've had a couple people ask me, how do you know when to use props in the Oxford practice? And I think that's a great question. I've been in a lot of classes where yoga teachers don't really cue props much if at all. And there are so many ways to enhance your asana practice using the props that are available at the studio. Now, I know that a lot of you are currently practicing from home and you might not have all of the books and other props that you would have access to at a yoga studio. I encourage you to get creative with what you do have at home. Um, you can, for example, replace some blocks with some large cans of food or replace your strap with um, a bath towel, like a bathrobe tie or a belt or anything like that. You just want to make sure that it doesn't have any give to it that is nice and um, sturdy. Um, blanket, you can use any blanket you find around your house except for a, like a really big bulky comfort that's probably not the best for your practice. And instead of a bolster, you could use a couple of nice sturdy pillows that you can find around your house or something like that. Um, this practice can also be done completely without props if you prefer to just practice on your mat without anything else. Um, yeah, so when you go to the yoga studio, there are some props that you typically see when you're there, right? So you'll usually see some blocks, straps, bolsters, and blankets. Those are kind of the big four props that we use in asana practice. There are definitely other props that can be used, and there are some great ways to enhance your asana practice using some other things. But these are the things that are found in most yoga studios and are used the most often. So I'm going to be focusing on this today. Um, so yeah, a lot of times teachers will cue only a couple props, if any. But I want to encourage you that it is always an option to bring out as many props as you'd like during your practice. Um, I never practice with anything less than two blocks and a blanket because those are the props that I know that I use most often throughout my practice. But I sometimes like to bring out all the props even if the teacher cues none. So the props are there to support you and it's always okay to use more props than the teacher cues and to use them in places that the teacher cues them. Um, but a lot of you probably don't know how to incorporate props into your practice. So I'm going to take you through a very simple flow tonight. And I'm really going to try and work in props as much as possible to show you all the different ways that they can help you in your practice. Either box them into a pose more fully or comfortably or safely. So I'm going to be using two blocks, a strap, a blanket, and a bolster for tonight, and if you have those props, if you at home, grab them and join me. If you don't, maybe get creative, or maybe just hop on your mat. You're welcome to use no props at all. That will definitely be an option throughout the practice. Um, let's see. If you want to invest in props for your home practice, I'm going to link some of my recommendations in the description below. Um, yeah, obviously, as I said, you don't need to. Usually props are available to you at your studio if you're practicing there, but maybe you want to deepen your practice right now outside of the studio and would like some props, so I will have a couple options linked in the description if that's something that you would think to be supportive to your practice and keeping your practice strong during this time. So without further ado, um, hop into something you can move in and grab your mat. We're going to start in a comfortable seat. So I'm going to recommend just a kalasana or easy pose, which is just simply crossing your legs on the 
floor. Now a couple ways that I like to use props in this pose is you can sit on a blanket, just the back of your hips. It's kind of right under your sit bones, which allows for a little slope in your um, thigh bones, which allows your, to, your back to be more straight, and you go. Not grip your hip flexors as much. You can either take that blanket straight back behind you, or you can put the corner kind of pointing towards the front of the space, which will even give you more space in your hips. Another option is to sit on a block, or as many blocks as you'd like, to make this pose comfortable and accessible to you. So as you find yourself on the mat, take a minute to take in your surroundings. And start to deepen your breath. We're going to take three cleansing breaths to start our practice. So take a deep inhale through your mouth, through your nose. And exhale, mouth. Inhale, deep through your nose. Exhale, let go. One more, inhale. And with an exhale, allow your eyes to close comfortably. Allow your breath to return to its natural rhythm as you start to settle into the space. Take a moment to check in with your physical body. Notice any sensations, tension or ease. Any place you want to direct more breath or prana tonight? Anything that needs extra attention? Feel the things that you're in contact with, your mat, if you're sitting on a block or a blanket. The weight of your hands on your knees. And when you're ready, take a moment and start to observe your thoughts. Notice if your brain is really chatty this evening, or if you're feeling a little sluggish. If you need to slow down, maybe Put extra focus on your exhales, making them longer than your inhales. And if you want to get some more energy, put a bit more focus on your inhales, making them longer than your exhales. But in all of this, just observing without any judgment. As we continue, take a moment to check in with your emotional body. Ask yourself, how are you feeling in this present moment? Note anything that you brought with you onto your mat this evening. And with an exhale, see if you can let it go. Bringing your attention only to this present moment. Finally, take a moment to notice your energetic body. Tapping into the energy and prana that you're experiencing. And continuing taking smooth breaths. 
just observing all parts of the body as if watching from the side of a road and noticing how you feel right now. It's part of your practice, start to cultivate a new jayi pranayama, ujjayi breath, so the victorious breath. You're creating a little bit of tension in the back of your throat as if you're fogging up a mirror on both your inhales and your exhales. This is an audible breath. It makes somewhat of an oceanic sound. It's a great basis to support your practice and your movement, giving yourself something to focus on throughout your practice, always coming back to the breath. If you're completely lost with the Ujjayi breath, taking long, deep inhales and exhales through your nose is also a great option. Whatever you're taking, just take a few more moments to get into the rhythm of your breath that you're going to be carrying throughout this practice. Ready, flutter the eyes open. Take another breath in this pose. And we're going to transition into another seated pose. We're going to transition into a variation of rock pose. This is a kneeling pose. I like to use one block at its medium height under my hips to take some of the pressure off of my knees and ankles in this pose. Feel free to sit up on as many blocks or blankets as you feel comfortable. Or you're free to sit on your heels if that's accessible to you. Your jaya breath is flowing. As we inhale our arms forward, exhale to cross your right arm over your body. Find you stretch in the back of your right shoulder. Keep energy extending through your fingertips. As you breathe into this position, a deep inhale, a long exhale. Inhale, exhale to twist into this pose. Maybe your gaze turns over your left shoulder as you deepen the stretch. Inhale here, exhale to deepen the twist. Think of rooting your right sit bone down into the block in order to spiral your navel back towards the front of the space while your shoulders are spiraling back to the left. Inhale here. One more exhale, finding a slightly deeper twist. And on an inhale, releasing back to the center. And exhale, releasing your arms down by your sides. Take a moment to notice differences between right and left side body, and on an inhale, arms sweep forward, and exhale to cross your left arm over your body. Again, coming back into the breath, feeling a stretch in the back of your left shoulder, extending through your fingertips energetically. Breath is flowing, finding a deeper stretch with each exhale. And when you're ready, take an inhale and on an exhale, take a twist, deepening your stretch. Gaze goes over right shoulder. 
As you reach your left sit bone back into the box, spiraling your navel back towards the front of the space. Energizing through your fingertips. Inhale, exhale to deepen the twist. Breath is flowing. On your next inhale, come back to center. Now on an exhale, release your arms down by your sides. Take a moment sitting up tall. And on an exhale, allow your head to roll forward. Your chin reaching towards your chest. And start to take any movement in your neck that feels good. Maybe thinking of moving your chin from one shoulder to the other. Exhale through center. Inhale to bring your chin up to your shoulder. Exhale back to center. Inhale chin to shoulder. If you want more, exhale chin to chest. Inhale ear to shoulder. Exhale coming back through center. Take this at your own breath pace. Luxuriating into the movement. Maybe hanging out at any place that feels like it needs some love tonight. Exhale on through center. And if you're ready for it, taking some big head circles. Being careful not to release into your neck at any place. Keeping length in all sides of your neck. Breath is flowing. You want a little extra stretch and a safety precaution of the back. Think of giving yourself an underbite so that you can more deeply stretch the front of your neck while making sure that you don't release your neck and crunch it in the back. When you're ready and your head is at the bottom, start to reverse the movement in the opposite direction. Still moving with the breath. Variating each point of this movement. And when you're ready, your head finds the bottom of the movement. Inhale to lift your head back up to center. Take a moment to check in how that feels in your body. And I now invite you to grab a strap if you have one. We're going to take a variation of Gomukhasana arms or cow face arms. So to start, I recommend that you take um, your strap over your left shoulder. Inhale your right arm up overhead and exhale to grab the strap by your shoulder. Your left arm is going to come and find the strap below, below your right hand. And you can start to walk your hands towards each other in this pose. If your fingers touch, you can drop the strap. That's awesome. If not, find your range of motion here and take a moment feeling a stretch in the underside of your right arm. Breath is flowing. Be careful not to um, let go of your back or neck. Sitting up nice and tall, keeping a solid foundation here. And you're going to take an inhale, exhale to bend to the left, finding a stretch in your right side body. Right sit bone is rooting into the block. Inhale here and exhale. Keep your breath flowing.
And then on an inhale, come back up through center. Release the strap, release your arms. And we'll set up to take the same thing on the other side, draping your strap over your right shoulder. Inhale your left arm up overhead to grab the strap wherever it's accessible. And reaching your right arm back behind, grabbing the strap below your left hand. Inch your fingers closer together. Maybe they clasp, but maybe they don't. And you stay with the strap. Inhale, make sure you're finding length in your spine. You'll probably have one in the side that's a lot tighter than the other. That's totally normal. Maybe you can grab your fingers on one side and you can't on the other. Just take whatever variation of this you need on each individual side. Take an inhale here and exhale to find a side body stretch in your left side body. Rooting your left sit bone down into the block. Inhaling here and exhaling to find a deeper stretch. Inhale and exhale, let it go. Take an inhale to come back up to your center. Exhale to release your hands down by your sides. Take a couple, you can move your strap to the side, take a couple circles of your shoulders. One way and the other. When you're ready, we'll come up to all fours in tabletop pose. When you get here, option to use a blanket to pad your knees. Placing it under your knees and setting up for the pose as usual with wrists under shoulders and knees under hips. On an inhale, find cow pose, dropping your belly, shining your heart forward. Exhale to round your back, pressing into the back, chin and chest. Finding a continuous curve throughout your spine. Inhale to cow pose. Opening your heart space, exhale, round your back into the cat. We'll move this through this a few more times at your own breath pace. Keeping your breath flowing. And luxuriating into any movement that feels good. Have your spine in this pose. Feel free to take some C shapes or barrel rolls. And when you're ready, we'll be back in the neutral tabletop. We're going to take some hip circles, starting with your right leg. Inhale to lift your right leg out to the back. Exhale to bring it back down through center. We'll take three to each direction. And through the other side, other direction. We'll take the same thing on the other side. Three circles one way. And three circles in the other direction. Bring me back in the neutral table to take any last movement of your spine that you want. Inhale here and on an exhale, press back into downward facing dog. With your first downward facing dog of the practice. Take a moment to pedal through your feet and take any conscious movement to deepen your pose here. Maybe you take a deep bend in both knees, dialing your hips up towards the ceiling, finding a straight back. Engage Hasta Bandha. 
clawing your finger pads into the mat, finding an arch in your palm. Breath is flowing here. Take an inhale and an exhale. On an inhale, rising up onto the top of your toes, bending your knees, and on the bottom of your exhale, gently step to the top of your mat. Now's a great time to find two blocks on either side of your feet on their highest height. Inhale for a halfway lift, flatten your back. Exhale to fold, forward fold, Uttanasana. Back knees can be as bent as you would like in this pose. Find a moment of relaxation, just let everything go. Feel the weight pulling your head down to the ground. When you're ready, inhale, hands overhead. Urdhva Hastasana, upward to your exhale, hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra. I'm going to take a variation of a classical sun salutation now. So we'll inhale, hands overhead, exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana, hands meet the blocks. Inhale, halfway lift, looking forward, back is flat, exhale to fold. Keeping your hands on your blocks, take a large right step back into a runner's lunge. Use the blocks to find extra space to dial open your chest. Rock forward and back here a bit. As always, try to engage your legs so that you can hover your hands off of the blocks. And when you feel complete, release your knee down to the mat or pat it on the blanket. Keeping your blocks on their highest height. Inhale to press into the blocks, getting a little bit of a back bend here. Option to take your arms overhead into Anjumayasana or to leave your hands on the block in this direction. Inhale and exhale. Inhale to press back into Ardo Hanumanasana, half split. Hands can stay on the blocks at any length any height, or they can come to the floor, trying to find length in your spine, not rounding your back over your front leg, breath is flowing, inhale, and exhale. Inhale if you would like to try and find, if you're feeling ready, or now we're not, we're not very warm, to try and find a full Hanumanasana or a full split. You can use the blocks to back yourself out of it a bit, staying supported in your shoulders, not letting your shoulders collapse at all. Using your core to stay supported on your hands, maybe. You inch closer into the full pose. If you find the full pose, or if you don't and you still want to, press into the box to find a little bit of a back bend. Option, of course, to stay in half splits. And inhale, press yourself back up, using your blocks, finding yourself back into a runner's lunge. With your knee down. Switch your blocks to the medium height. Inhale to lift your back knee up off the mat and step back into a plank pose. Inhale here, exhale, knees meet the mat, bend your elbows. Hugging them close to your side, and when you get to that point, flip, extending your elbows, finding a variation of up dog or cobra, still supported by the blocks. And when you're ready, press directly back into downward facing dog. Hands are still on the blocks, breath is flowing. 
Having your hands on blocks might be a great way to get further expression out of your downward facing dog. We'll be here for a couple of breaths. Now take a large right step forward in between your blocks. Blocks can come up to their highest height as you dial up in your chest, finding openness in your heart space, energizing into your legs as if you could take your hands off of your blocks. When you're ready, on an exhale, release your knees, your knee to the floor and your foot. And inhale to press back into a bit of a back bend. Maybe you stay here, maybe you take the hands overhead into a full expression of knee down, crescent on the nyasana. Breath is flowing for an inhale and exhale. Next, exhale, press back into Ardha Hanumanasana, half split. Walk your blocks to where you need or want them. Find it length in your back. Taking the blocks to any height that feels good for you. Finding a stretch in the back of your right leg. Breath is still flowing. Energizing through your right toes. Maybe activating the stretch by pressing your right heel down into the mat. Engaging your hamstring. If you're feeling it, bring your blocks back up to their highest height and slowly come forward into Hanumanasana or full split. If this is too early in your practice, stay in Ardha Hanumanasana, it's a great pose too. Using your blocks to spiral open your chest into a bit of a back bend. Breath keeps flowing as you inhale here and exhale. Exhale two, inhale, exhale three, on an inhale, switch your blocks back to their highest setting, press into your arms to come back into a knee down lunge. Blocks are on either side of your foot. Inhale to lift your left knee up off the mat and take a large left step forward to meet your right foot at the front of the mat. Blocks come in front of your feet, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, arms overhead, or the hasasana. Exhale, hands to heart center. Feel the heat generating in your body. Your breath is flowing, and you take it to the other side. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Hands meet the box. Inhale, halfway lift. Straightening your knees and back. Exhale, fold forward, deepening your knee bend, and releasing your back. Take a large left step back, moving your box back to frame your right foot into a runner's lunge, energizing through your feet as though you can take your hands off of your blocks. Inhale here, exhale, release your left knee and foot to the ground. Inhale, press back into Adonaiasana. Inhale here, and exhale. On an inhale, energize through your left leg. Blocks come to their medium height as you step back into plank pose. Inhale here, exhale to release your knees down, bending your elbows by your sides, and then an inhale, taking a back bend, supported with the blocks. Inhale here, exhale, press back into downward facing dog, tucking your toes. How much more length can you find with your hands on blocks in this pose? Breath is flowing. As you take a large left step forward on an inhale to between your blocks, Bulk come up to their highest height as you dial open your chest, 
Hands can come off the blocks on your energized legs as you keep an inhale here. And exhale to release your knee and foot to the floor. Inhale, press back into a back bend under the asana. Breath is flowing. Inhale. And exhale. And then inhale, energize through your back leg and take a big step forward to meet your left leg at the front of your mat. Inhale for a halfway lift, extending through the crown of your head. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, arms over head, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands to heart center. We're going to take a similar flow, going to a standing crescent pose this time. Inhale, your arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward, swan dive. Hands make the blocks. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Take a large right step back, using your blocks, framing your left foot. Dial open your shoulders. Find strength in your legs. Inhale. It's time arms come overhead into a full Adhanayasana. Find strength in this pose. Energizing through your fingertips and rooting into the ground with your feet. Inhale here. Exhale one. Inhale. Exhale two. Inhale. Exhale three. Inhale, exhale, hands meet the blocks, switching them to their medium height, step back into the plank pose. Inhale here, exhale, hands hug your body as you bend your elbows, maybe dropping your knees into a back bend. Inhale here, exhale, press back into downward facing dog. When you're ready, take a large right step forward in between your blocks. Switch them up to their highest height as you dial open your shoulders, opening your heart space, energizing through your legs. Inhale, arms overhead down to my asana. Extending through your fingertips. Inhale, exhale one. Inhale, exhale two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, hands meet the blocks. Take a large left step forward to meet your right foot. Inhale, halfway lift, Dardanasana. Exhale, fold forward. Let it all go. Inhale, arms overhead, Ardha Pasasana. Exhale, hands to heart center in Anjali Mudra prayer pose. Do a couple of neutralizing breaths here before I take it to the left side. Good. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, swan dive forward, hands to the blocks. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Take a large left step back into a runner's lunge. Hands on the box, chest is open. Inhale, arms overhead, Ajayasana. Exhale, hands come right back down to the blocks as you switch them to their medium height. Step back into a plank pose. Inhale here, exhale, drop the knees or keep them lifted as you bend your elbows close to your sides and press back into a upward facing dog or cobra variation. Exhale to push back into downward facing dog. I don't know this is awesome. Take a couple of nice neutralizing breaths here. Dial your sit bones up to the ceiling. Find your micro bend in your knees. When you're ready, take a large left step forward in between your blocks, bringing them up to their highest height. Opening through your shoulders. Inhale, arms overhead. Alhiyasana. Exhale, hands meet the blocks. Take a large right step forward to the top of your mat and just enough forward fold and exhale. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Good. 
In this forward fold, maybe your hands come to elbows. Opposite elbows to take ragdoll. Let yourself sway side to side. Open and close your jaw, nod your head, you know. Letting everything release. When you're ready, inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Feel the energy between your palms. As you tune back into your Ujjayi breath. We're going to take a quick variation of sun salutation A to meet back and downward facing dog. Inhale your hands overhead. Exhale the full forward hands to blocks. Inhale, halfway lift, extending through the crown of your head. Exhale, fold. Moving your blocks to their medium height. Take a large left step, right step back and meet your legs back into plank pose. We'll take a couple of breaths here. Inhale, exhale one. Inhale, exhale two. Inhale, exhale three. Inhale, exhale. Option to drop your knees or to lower your arms. Chaturanga variation. Pressing back into Cobra or facing dog as you exhale, pressing back into Auto Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. <sighs> Take a moment to feel this pose. Option to stand the block section to let them go for now. As you walk your feet closer together, that you're touching at the back of your mat. Inhale to open your right hip, lifting your right leg and you feel like a dog. Finding a cup of air under your left armpit to keep your shoulders stabilized. Take a large right step forward in between your blocks. Straightening your right foot forward into a pyramid variation. When you're ready, we'll spiral open. Think warrior two, but your legs are closer together. Your right heel is in line with the middle of your left foot. As you shift forward and find your right hand to a block at any length for a triangle pose. Gaze can spiral up towards the sky. Option to stay here or to take a body wrapping your left hand around to your right thigh. Breath is flowing. Inhale. Exhale one. Inhale. Exhale two. Inhale. Exhale three. Take a deep bend into your front knee as you walk the block out in front of you. I'm rolling your arm to be back in a neutral triangle. Find yourself on your right leg to balance as you slow push your left leg up into half moon. Option to stay here or to take the bind for Chapasana. Extending energy through your back leg. Inhale. Exhale one. Inhale. Exhale two. We are about to engage. Inhale. Exhale three. Permission to come in and out of the poses. When you're ready, grab your other block. Also to the front of your mat as you rotate into warrior three legs. Dialing your toes down and evening off your hips. Maybe take a couple squats here. Create on your supporting leg. And when you're ready, take a deep bend into your right knee. Step back into a runner's lunge. Box moving with you. Inhale, arms overhead on the asana. 
Exhale, hands back to the blocks, bring them down to their middle height, step back into plank. Inhale here, take a vinyasa, and you meet in downward facing dog. Couple of deep neutralizing breaths here. As you walk your feet together, inhale your left leg up. Opening your hips, supporting under your right arm. Take a large step with your left hand, with your left foot between your legs, finding straight knees, thinking pyramid. As you spiral over your legs and your arms facing the side, your left heel is in line with the middle of your right foot in the back. Take a moment to adjust your stance to be the right length for you. As we shift forward, and take a bend, finding triangle pose. Extending up through your right fingers. Maybe you take a bind here. So we inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale to bring your right arm back up to the sky. You took the bind. Bending deep into your left knee and looking towards the ground. Move your block forward as much as you need it for your half moon. As you engage in the bandha and extend back through your fingers. And into your half moon pose. Inhale here. Exhale, one. Inhale, exhale, two. Permission to come in and out of the pose if you need to. Inhale, exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, find both of your blocks to the front of your mat as you dial your toes down toward your three legs. As always, option to take your arms off of your blocks or to keep them on your blocks, maybe taking a couple squats into your left leg, finding stability there, finding a lot of energy from your heels to the crown of your head as your breath comes in and breath goes out. Moving your blocks back to frame your left foot, take a large step back into a runner's lunge. Inhale, arms overhead onto the asana. Exhale, hands to the blocks, switch them to their medium height, step back into a plank variation. Inhale here. Exhale to find a vinyasa, wing meet, and downward facing dog. When you're ready, Lift your right leg up, thinking three-legged dog. Think right foot to the outside of both blocks. Coming into a variation of blizzard. Maybe stay up onto any level of the box. That feels good for you. Maybe your hands come to the floor. Maybe your knee releases down to maybe the blanket or mat, you're still good, maybe your elbows come down to blocks as you lean forward, opening through your groin, breath is flowing, as you inhale and exhale, inhale, exhale two, Inhale, exhale three, inhale, exhale four, inhale, exhale five, inhale to come back up onto your hands and blocks, wherever you want them, push back into your downward facing dog, energize through your back leg as you take a step back with your right foot directly into downward facing dog. 
couple of neutralizing breaths here. As you float your left leg up off the mat on an inhale, and step into the outside of both of your blocks to the edge of your mat for a variation of lizard. Options begin, keeping your hands on blocks at any level, moving your knee down to the mat, maybe coming down to elbows on blocks or on the mat, finding whatever variation feels good to you. Breath is flowing. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. If you're on your elbows on your mat, maybe bring your head to a block. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale, exhale five, inhale, come back up to your blocks at whatever height you would like them for your downward facing dog as you energize through your back leg and step directly back into downward facing dog. Feel any changes in your body. On an inhale, float your right leg up off the mat. And on an exhale, think right foot to left hand or lock. Maybe you have to move your blocks forward a little bit as you settle down into a pigeon pose. Options begin. Maybe you want to take a block on a diagonal under this hip to give you some extra support. If you think that the block is too much, maybe you take a rolled up blanket, rolling it up this way, and you can put that under your hip in the same way, kind of at a diagonal. Allow you to square your hips off more and find a deeper stretch. If you are Comfortable coming all of the way down into a full expression of the pose. Maybe you lean forward onto your elbows, maybe your elbows are on blocks. Or maybe your elbows come all the way down to the floor and your head can rest on the block. Breath is flowing as you try and relax into this pose deeper with every exhale. Inhale and exhale. Take one more deep breath in through your nose and out through your nose. Reset your blocks to whatever height you'd like them in your downward facing dog. Feel free to just bring your hands to the mat as you energize through your back leg and step straight back into downward facing dog. Mm. Feel any differences between right and left side body as you inhale to float your left leg up off the mat. Exhale, think left foot to right hand as you lower down into pigeon pose. Again, the option of taking a rolled up blanket or block under your left hip are great options. Maybe your elbows come to blocks or to the mat. And if your elbows are on the mat, maybe your head comes to rest on a block. At any level, breath is flowing. As you inhale, exhale one. Inhale, exhale two, inhale, exhale three, inhale, exhale four, inhale, exhale five. Bring your blocks back to wherever you would like them. 
for one last downward facing dog, energize the your back foot as you step back, lifting your tail up towards the ceiling, pressing through your fingers. Inhale to rise up all the way up to the top of your toes. Bending your knees on the bottom and exhale, step forward in between your hands. Take a halfway lift and exhale to bend your knees deeply. Trying, if you can, to come into a squat with your hips right above your heels. Reaching forward to as gently as possible. Come back to a seat. When you're there, straighten your legs out in front of you. Keep all of your props within arm's reach. And slowly roll all the way back down onto your back. Take a moment here to notice how the body feels. Bring your knees up to the ceiling. Maybe rock them back and forth. Windshield wiping from one side to the other. When you're ready, we'll take your strap. You bring your knees bent, wrapping your strap around the ball of your right foot and extending up into Father Stasana. Holding the strap wherever it feels good to you. To activate the strap, press the foot into it. As you inhale and exhale, inhale and exhale too. Maybe the bottom leg extends out. Energizing through your foot. Inhale. Exhale three. Inhale. Exhale four. Inhale. Exhale five. Inhale. Bring your left leg back up, knee pointing to the ceiling as you release the strap from your foot and slowly lower your leg down to the floor. Inhale to bind your left foot into the strap, the ball of the foot. Hands are wherever they fall on the strap. Inhale here, pressing into the strap to activate the stretch. Maybe extending your right leg down and exhale. Inhale, exhale two. Inhale, exhale three. Inhale, exhale four. Inhale, exhale five. Inhale, bend your right knee back up to the ceiling. Exhale to release the strap from your foot and slowly lower it back down to the mat. A moment to feel that in your body. We're going to take a supported bridge pose. So there's a number of options in doing this. You can take a block under your sacrum at the lowest part of your hips on either the lowest setting or at the medium setting. Give yourself a little extra back bend. This is a great option. If you have a bolster or a couple of firm pillows, you can also bring that under your the same spot of your pelvis. You can take a minute to adjust to find this place that is just right. Once you've found whatever variation you've chosen. Maybe let the eyes come to close as your breath keeps flowing. We'll be here for a little bit.
option to stay here, or if you'd like a little bit more active back bending, moving your bolster up, rolling to your right side, press up to a seat, rolling over onto your knees, thinking rock pose, take both of your blocks behind you at any level, and find your hands to the blocks as you take an inhale to press your hips forward into a variation of camel. Breath is flowing here, chin can be supported or release your head back. For two more breaths here. Slowly lower your hips back down to your knees. If you're kneeling, swinging your feet back in front of you, we're going to take a supported fish pose. You'll find one block at its medium height and another block at its highest height behind you. You might take a moment to figure out the setup of this pose. You want the first block to hit you right under your shoulder blades and the second block to gently support your head. This is a great chest opener. Again, we'll be sustaining this pose for a little while. Maybe your eyes flutter closed. Taking deep, flowing inhales and exhales. Option to stay here as long as you'd like. If you're coming with me, roll to one side to release the blocks from behind you. As you roll back down and onto your back, releasing everything down to the floor. Knees bend, pointing up towards the ceiling. Think either wide leg child's pose for a spinal neutralizer. Option here to take happy baby, hands coming to the outside edges of your feet, maybe rocking back and forth. Your tailbone is rooted down into the earth. Your breath is flowing here. your feet and take a moment to hug your knees into your chest, curling up into a little ball. Exhale to release your feet back down to the mat. Have either a bolster or a block nearby. Throw it to your left side as you release your left leg down to the ground and bring your right knee up into your chest. We're going to take a twist, bringing your right knee across your body to rest on the bolster or block. Then once you have arrived in the pose, you can open your arms and turn your gaze over your right arm. Breath is flowing here. Maybe 
you take your left hand to the top of your right knee. Inhale to bring your gaze back up to the ceiling. Pull your right knee closer to your chest as you come out of the pose back to neutral. Both legs meet the mat, knees up to the ceiling. Switch your blocker bolster onto the other side of your body. So you prepare to take the same thing on the other side, extending your right leg out and pulling your left knee in towards your chest. Cross your left knee over your body, finding a resting pose on the blocker bolster. And once you've settled into the pose, turn your gaze over your left palm. Inhale, bring your gaze back up to the ceiling. Pull your left knee in closer to the chest as you come out of the pose. Finding both feet down, planted on the floor. One more time, windshield wiper your knees back and forth from one side to the other, pushing anything out of the way if you need to. When you're ready, we're going to extend our legs down into our Shavasana, our final resting pose. Now there's so many ways to use props in Shavasana to make it even more supportive to your body. A couple options. You can find two blocks under your knees. That feels supportive to you. You can find your bolster under your knees as well. Both of these options help to release the lower back. Maybe you find a folded blanket or bolster underneath your head. Yeah, like coming up. Make sure it's not too much on our neck, though. And maybe you take a blanket, draping it across your hips or your full body for weight or warmth. Whatever pose you're taking, take a minute to find it. Find whatever your body needs right now. And as you come to settle in, softly close your eyes. to spend movement moving our awareness around the physical body. Starting with the crown of head, forehead, tip of the nose, chin, throat, chest, right shoulder, the whole right arm, chest, left shoulder, the whole left arm, 
chest, abdomen, pelvis, right hip, the whole right leg, pelvis, left hip, the whole left leg, pelvis, lower back, mid back, upper back, neck, back of the head, crown of the head, the whole body relaxed, the whole body relaxed, the whole body relaxed, take a moment to observe your thoughts, And a moment to tune into your emotional and energetic body. Observing the body without judgment. Notice any changes between the beginning of class and now. When you're ready, you start to deepen your breath. Drawing your attention back to it. And start to invite subtle movement to the body, wiggling your fingers and toes, hands and wrists, ankles, nodding your head from side to side. And maybe taking a big morning stretch with your hands overhead. Extending energy through your fingers. When you're ready, pull your knees into your chest and give them a squeeze. 
Moving any props out of the way. Rolling onto your right side, maybe using your head as a pillow. Take a moment to reflect on your practice. Reflect on any gems. And here on your side, take a moment of gratitude for whatever space and props you have to practice right now. <clears throat> and for everything that this practice has to offer you on and off the mat. When you're ready, gently press yourself up to a comfortable seat. Maybe coming back to sitting on the edge of a blanket or block. Find the length of sitting up tall through your spine. If you'd like to join me with your hands at heart center in Anjali Mudra. We'll take three cleansing breaths to finish the practice. Inhale through your nose. And full exhale through your mouth. Inhale. Exhale, let it go. One more inhale. And exhale. If you'd like to join me, bringing thumb knuckles up to third eye center and offering the blessing of Namaste to all beings. Seeing the light in me shines and honors the light in each one of you. Thank you for your practice. Namaste. Thank you so much for your practice. I hope you learned a little bit more about how to use props in your asana practice tonight. If you have any more questions, please let me know. Thank you for your practice. I'll see you next time. Namaste.